There has long been a friendly divide in the Sims community regarding the inclusion of occult Sims such as werewolves, vampires, and fairies. But despite how you personally feel about them, you will likely fall in love with Moonlight Falls. Its stunning landscape paired with gorgeous builds makes it an excellent choice for any Sims player to call home. In our last episode, we gave review after glowing review. Let's hope the rest of the builds blow us away as well. What's up guys, Rakowski here, and today we are finishing off our rating of the EA builds in Moonlight Falls. This is our final episode for this world, so you can click the link in the description where you can vote for the next world we review. You guys had some great suggestions, so no matter what, we'll be in for a good time. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get into the video. This world is breathtaking. Welcome back everybody to Moonlight Falls. So we're just getting ready to finish off our rating of the occupied lots. I was just caught off guard by its gorgeousness. But yeah, in the last episode, if you noticed, we gave such high scores. I gave two perfect tens. I gave a bunch of nines and eights. Overall, this world has been by far the most stylish that we've ever seen but we haven't done all of the builds yet, and I haven't seen any of the other ones, so I'm not really sure if the rest of the world is gonna live up to our expectations. So let's just jump in right away and let's get started. First up is the Outdoorsman's Delight. Oh, he's a fairy. I just saw like green coming out the back of him and I just assumed that he farted, but I was wrong, I guess. And I think this guy's a werewolf. So this is the roommate's vegan and they live in this like cabin thing. I actually really like the siding. It's not beautiful per se, but it's very realistic and it's very detailed as well. I think, I think the color is great. I like that they already have a farm. There's a lot of windows though, I noticed. The back has this whole bay window area and I don't think that's very typical of a cabin, but of course, it could be renovated. They also have more garden stuff back here, lots of trees and landscaping, and I I really like this garage. It matches the house and the driveway looks like normal. I, I think it's a really good detail, but I'm not blown away by the shell or anything. So let's jump inside and see what style choices they made. So no surprise to me, they chose green for everything, but it's a good shade of green. I especially like it at the top here. I've never really seen a wall like this in a long time. I kind of forgot that they existed. I think it's really nice. I like like how they use lots of plants. You see this a lot in current Sims 4 builds. People like to use lots of plants to decorate the space and fill it up. I think they did a really great job of that. The layout is a little bit smushed for an EA build, but it's nice to see something different. Now the kitchen, I love this stove actually. I wonder if this comes with the world. I haven't seen that before, but the fridge and the stove are next to each other, so that isn't great. Okay, and moving upstairs, we continue. It's kind of like Victorian style, even though it's in a cabin. I don't hate that either. And the bathrooms are nice, normal colors. They're nice and white. There's just green in every other room but the bathrooms. But that's way better in my opinion anyway. It doesn't really seem like much, but I think that they put a lot of care into the details. Nothing in it is ugly, especially the inside. I think it was really well styled. And the outside looks like a realistic cabin. I'm going to give this one an 8. It doesn't exactly scream roommates to me. That's kind of the one thing that's bothering me. It does kind of remind me of like grandma's house. Next up is the Petite Mansion. Ooh, it's like a mini gothic mansion. I kind of like this shape, actually. If you look at it from afar, it's almost like they cut that psycho house in half, which is not really a bad thing. I don't mind the brown. I'm not a big brown wood fan, but they've done some really nice choices. The bay window here is a great detail. It has all those mansion details, but without the colossal size and price tag. I stole that from the actual lot description, so that's kind of what I was expecting. But Sometimes they look nothing like what they say, but so far so good. Love the shell. Uh, it's a little bit dull and dreary, but it is an old mansion, I guess. So it's kind of it's kind of what you would expect. They did kind of put the kitchen at the front, which is not really Victorian or Gothic style. It's a little bit of an oversight. The dining room is pretty nice for having a green floor. They and again, they're adding things to the actual rooms. This was one of the complaints I had in a lot of the worlds. They would just have like this big dining room with just tables and chairs and nothing else. But this time, see how they have like the couch, the lamp, even if it's not centered and this like plant and the stereo just gives a little extra touch to the room 
Okay, this is a little bit clashy. So this had the potential to be really good, but unfortunately, see how they use the mint in some places and then like more of a green in some places? They should have picked one. Well, they should have picked the mint, I guess, but they should have picked one of the two and kind of went for it. The bathroom is all right though for having a green floor. This bathroom is nicer, obviously. And I like this room a little bit better. It's kind of vampire-y. I wonder, I'm sure each of these is gonna be like a different occult or wants to be. Ooh, this is a really nice bedroom too. Very, very feminine, kind of like Cassandra punk goth in her teens, right? Beautiful non-green bathroom over there. This bedroom is really nice too. I think they put a lot of detail overall. I like how each of them are different. I am pleasantly surprised. I love the shell, the inside. Like again, they don't do every style choice that I would have personally done, but they really paid attention. They put lots of stuff in the build. They didn't overwhelm it with ugly colors. I'm gonna give it a nine. This is just like the last episode. Like we're just starting with these high scores. I don't think we're gonna be disappointed at this point. Next up is Pleasant Place. So this house has a similar suburban style to some of the other houses in the world. It's very cohesive. We can actually see one in the background here. But if you remember, there was like the Great Greek and stuff, and they had a really nice color palette, and this one follows through. This one is a little bit McMansion-y, especially with uh, the turret on the side here. So the lot description actually describes this place as a castle, and that's how the crappy real estate developments in my area are being marketed as well. Like, you can have this three bedroom castle for your family whatever but i'm not gonna hold that against the build i think it's really nice it's really well done again nice and balanced a little bit simple for the shape but they didn't screw up the roofing so that really helps it out a lot again i see lots of green walls and you know me i'm not a huge fan of green but they are using it well i can't just rip on it for no reason right and the living room it's kind of a nice soft palette this is a much brighter house than the last few that we've seen this episode and Again, it's more in the suburban area. This is, I guess, more the keeping up appearances one with all the families. The kitchen is the fridge and the stove next to each other again. I bet the same person built this kitchen, but it's still really nice. And I think nothing really stands out as being ugly. There's a little bit of baby poo color in the bathroom, which, you know, I'm not a fan of, but I like how the toilet room is separate and it has this little window. So that's a very nice little detail. Moving upstairs, we have more green, but it's the same green as downstairs. So it's actually quite cohesive and they use it really well. I like how they have like a workout room, like just a little bit more diverse diversity because when you're playing with the cult sims you kind of lose some of the normal activities that people want to do oh and going upstairs we also have a foosball table they love this foosball table in this world everyone loves foosball this bathroom is stunning love this tile and i love that they didn't use it for the wall and the floor and the shower they use it just enough overall the build is really well done i like what they did with it i just wish they used completely different color palettes and just kind of spice it up a little bit more but they had some good stuff going so I'm gonna give it a 7.5 I guess I'm a little bit harsher on it too because it was like this is the castle you're gonna live in and I'm like hmm we'll see Next up is Quaint Settlement. This is actually the house that I saw in the background of the last house we did over here. And I thought it was one that we already did because again, it fits that same style. But looking at it straight on, I can tell it's a little bit different. In the description, they did say, if you love dormers, then you'll love this place. And they weren't wrong. They definitely stuck a couple there. It's clipping through a bit, but that's more a fault of the game. Because if you did that in The Sims 4, it would be totally fine. And even though the shell is basic, it does take a lot of effort to make a second story in this style with the dormers especially to get the roofing even semi-passably like I didn't notice there was anything wrong till I really looked at it so, and you never play with the roof up so as long as it works I'm fine with it okay let's jump inside green wallpaper they love green I guess green is kind of the brand color for the supernatural pack because the font is in green when you buy the pack right so we can forgive it going inside the furniture is really nice I think they make some nice furniture choices I haven't talked too much about it yet in this entire world, but they pick things that are nice and simple and usable and they don't stand out. And that's kind of a good thing. It's okay to have one statement furniture piece, like a loud couch, but you don't want like everything to be like that. The kitchen is really nice. I like this back sunroom. I really don't like this shade of green and I really don't like it with this pink. I don't think these colors go together at all, but at least they tried. You can see they put the color on the lamp too, right? Okay, let's go upstairs. Ooh, this is like 
They didn't know if they wanted green or teal or blue or all of them. I guess they chose all of them. There's that Sims 2 cheating tree that I really, really like. I like this upstairs hallway. They've been doing this kind of angle on the side, kind of by the stairs here. And that's a nice little detail as well. Very realistic. I've seen things like that. And no green bathrooms in sight. We have to give credit where credit is due. I mean, it's nothing amazing, nothing too hideous. I really didn't like that one bedroom. That's probably the ugliest thing we've seen in the world so far. And that's kind of a good thing because we're still going to give this one a seven. Like I said, it's all about the details. And you can see like they actually use spandrels on the porch here to line it up. They have eaves, troughs. I just I love it. Next up is refined elegance. It's beautiful and exactly like a lot of the other houses we've seen. I know in a lot of the other worlds I was like dying for cohesion, but they took it to the extreme. I have noticed as well that like they're using the exact same columns, same fence, similar doors and windows. So they're really going for the cohesion. It would be nice if they switched it up a little bit. I usually like just like doing the houses in different colors. So like this is like a pale Easter yellow. So I might do one in a blue, one in a green, one in a pink. And they did do that a little bit. They just didn't do it for any of these. Ooh, this kitchen is actually really well done. Look at that. They have it kind of half boxed in with just the island on the side. That's really nice. I never think to do anything like that. All my kitchens end up like a corner or just a wall. The living room's a little small and cramped. If I'm honest, it kind of looks like one of those like build challenge houses when you're trying to do it in a a certain number of tiles but I mean you can't always have big gigantic rooms and I do like how they made these houses a little bit more compact like I've said before okay going upstairs they have a foosball table they all love foosball in this world what's with werewolves vampires and foosball the bedrooms are kind of simple right nothing nothing too special I do find they wasted a little bit of space up here with such a giant hallway actually they didn't really waste it they actually put stuff in it which is nice because sometimes in this game they'll just kind of leave this big empty hallway but they could have done like another room, I think. They could have squeezed in maybe at least an um another bathroom or something. Coming back outside, it's lit very beautifully. It looks really nice and pleasant. And that's a nice thing for EA to do for us. But unfortunately, the inside wasn't as strong as some of the other builds that we've seen. And I am going to grade a little bit against the curve. And I have to give this one a six. But of course, if I saw this in like Sunset Valley, I would have been like, thank God. Next up is the Spacious Revival. Immediately, my first thought is, it's my least favorite house that I've seen so far in Moonlight Falls. It's in like a mid-century style and the windows don't really match the style, which is the problem. I like the back actually a lot better. I love this sunroom. I love this like kind of covered porch area and I love these windows. Of course, they're not centered because it's EA, but what can you do? The house is also a little too wide. I would have kind of brought it in a little bit more. They could have made it a little bit more dynamic. The only details they really used are these bump out parts and they're just not really doing it for me. This house is far from ugly. I just don't really like it. So let's just jump inside and see. Uh, this room looks like barf. Let's see. Oh, the walls are green too. Oh, there's green tiles in the kitchen. How lovely. I can't wait to cook in here. Oh my God. Unfortunately, this house is not looking too good from the start. The green kind of goes into the dining room. The carpet is green. This carpet is green. This car is green. It's too much. And you think you escape the bathroom, but of course there's green in the bathroom. It's actually not too bad. I like the white kind of stone. They could have chose green stone, right? Then they have this baby poo study in the back. This is disgusting. This gigantic living room has nothing in it. And every honestly, I think every other room in this house so far has more stuff than the largest room. There's a basement too. Going down here, we have another green tiled bathroom. Wonderful. And then we have a green rec room. And of course, a foosball table because everyone in Moon Moonlight Falls loves it. Now, fortunately, somebody has style. Whoever sleeps in this bedroom, they have some style. We can see that. This rec room, see, it looks really 70s. I can forgive this kind of ugly color palette because it does remind me of a certain era, you know? And that's really, like, people liked ugly stuff like that. Going upstairs, this pink and blue room is beautiful. Love it. Love the color combination. Again, the bedrooms are really stylish. Well, not this bedroom, but the rest of the bedrooms are really stylish. I wonder what happened to the rest of the house. This thing was disappointing to say the least, but like I said, it's not the ugliest thing that we've ever seen. It's just the ugliest thing in Moonlight Falls. So we're gonna give it a four. The other thing I'll mention, I didn't take this into account with the score, but in the lot description, it does say how it doesn't take much to spruce up this place. So they're kind of expecting you to fix it, I think. Next up is the Bayview. 
This is another one of those suburban Greek revival style that they keep flouting. Now, I'll mention that this girl is a fairy and she inherited this house from her grandmother. So it might have a little bit of an old lady style. They windowed it really nicely. They're all about this bay window. Maybe that's part of the Greek revival style. I haven't really looked that up. I wasn't even sure that that was a thing. Because in Bridgeport, they kind of made up like Egyptian deco, which I googled and doesn't seem to exist. But that's fine, the shell is nice and simple. Maybe a little too simple compared to some of the other ones we've seen. So let's just jump inside and see what we get. Ooh, this is not the color palette I was expecting, but it is a nice change. They really brightened it up. They used like whites and beiges and blues, kind of old old lady colors, but not really an old lady style, but it does have some classic elements. I love this end table. They're using it in a lot of the builds. Love this half bathroom. Wait a minute, is that green tile? Like, I guess I can't really tell because the light isn't bright enough, so that's something. The back sunroom is probably the prettiest that I've seen. I really like the choices that they made here. I love this chess table. This bay window was utilized very beautifully, like a nice little sitting area. You have like, well, it's not a vanity, but it's a dresser with like the mirror and the makeup. Love that. And they put lots of paintings on the walls and I think in really nice places. And sometimes like they forget to do that. And so do we. The inside furnishing was pretty good. Not really my style at all, but I think it suits her. The outside is just too simple because they've done other houses in this style and they did better jobs with it before. I'm going to give this one a six. Like if your name isn't Kayla, you cannot get away with just building the same house over and over again. Next up is the Humble House. Another one of those simple trailer styles. I really like the bay porch area. I love this style, but again, it's getting a little bit repetitive. I do like the detail though of not really a garage, but an awning to protect your car. I don't love the brown accents with the yellow. The yellow is a little bit too yellow. I don't think I've seen a yellow trailer before. It's a little bit school busy if it was a little bit more orange, but this wood doesn't really accent it really well. And the landscaping is all dying, but it kind of suits the build. And they did put a lot of thought into it, I think. Okay, not much to say about the shell, of course. Let's jump inside. Oh, they use those gross 70 colors I don't like, but I don't think they did it as well. I do like the walls being this wood. I think that's very typical of a trailer, but then they have a green fridge. They have a green oven. These counters are not particularly beautiful. I like the shape of the kitchen for this size of a build. That's a nice, efficient kitchen. And in fact, this build was built with that in mind. So they talk about this, about how it's designed to have your sim walk as few steps as possible to get their needs met. Kind of like the Sims 2 Prima Guide tells us. But tragically, the bathroom is god ugly. This wooden toilet seat, I've, I've had one of these before. They're awful. I hate them. The windows are too big. The curtains don't cover it up enough. The tile is hideous. Not really my thing. They use that green that I hate everywhere. The shell is the worst that we've seen. It doesn't really do it for me at all. And unfortunately, since this house is in Moonlight Fall, we have to give it a two. It could probably make it to a four or five in any other world, but when you're comparing this to some of the other things we've seen, this is not gonna cut it. Next up is Treehouse. So this is a family of fairies and they live up in a treehouse, but it's not like a ridiculous treehouse. It's on stilts, very nice. Like I never saw a build like this. I think it's just the right amount. They kind of cup the trees around the sides. That's a really nice detail as if they're supporting up the house as well. Love this back pond. Best landscaping we've seen in the game so far. And I wouldn't say the house is beautiful, but it definitely suits the vibe. I'm down for it. And I can't wait to look inside. So we may as well just jump right in. Oh, good. At least we have one fairy room. I was scared the whole thing was going to be brown. But unfortunately, they did pick brown for a lot of it. I guess it's kind of a fairy color. I don't like how they chose wood for everything. You can't have a wood shower like this. A wood fridge? Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. I know you can put a panel of wood and kind of blend it into your cupboards, but a wood fridge? No, thank you. Which is next to the oven, so that's going to catch fire. And then you have this green seating area, which you know I love. I actually like this green with this brown. It's a really nice balance and it looks very earthy and it suits the vibe of the treehouse. And of course, this suits the fairy vibe. Going upstairs, wow, I was not expecting that. Okay, now I like the build a little bit better because this kind of ties it all in because it's a treehouse with all the wood. Then you have like this wooden dresser. It kind of looks like something out of World of Warcraft. 
And coming back out, once again, I'm kind of blown away by the shell. I'm not stunned by its beauty, but I'm stunned by its creativity, its effectiveness at executing its design, and also its functionality. Because when you make a build like this, you have to make sure that it's playable. And this house looks perfectly fine. I'm going to give this one an 8. This could have been in 10 territory. Like, if they kind of fairied up the outside a little bit, like, maybe not made it all pink and glittery, but just added a touch that would have really helped. And last but not least is the Witch's Cove. And you can tell it's a witch house because if you look here, there's a witch hat right on the roof. Actually, the lot description mentions that, so I was keeping an eye out for that anyway, but I definitely see it. Speaking of the roof, it's hideous. I think it's like just not the right shape for these kinds of roofs. And it's not that they did the roofing poorly. This is probably the best that you can do. It was just the shell. I would have done the shell in a different shape. I like the back more than the front. Again, I do like how they also have a wraparound porch that's very Victorian. I guess this is more of a gothic style too. It's a bit, it's a bit of a mix. They also say the garage is luxurious, so we have to make sure we pop in there when we do the review. Okay, well, at least we have one big ugly house to look at in this world, right? Let's look inside. Okay, the inside does colors a lot better. If you've ever seen my builds, I love this kind of reddish pink color. Now, I don't love how they put it with all these different ones. This is a little bit too diverse. I would have dialed it back a little bit, maybe picked two or three to go together, not four or five. But the rest of the house is very wooden, so you can use a lot of color. I like the dining room particularly. I just wish they put something in this, in this bay window area again. The kitchen's kind of basic and simple, just looks like an old lady kitchen. They love this atrium thing at the back. Almost all the builds have some sort of sunroom at the back of the house. This one has an easel. Upstairs is very dark and dreary as well, but it is a witch's house. They have something that overlooks to the atrium area. I think that's nice when they do like little architectural details. I have a hard time doing things like this. I can never get them to look nice, and this is really well done. This bathroom looks stupid though, because there's no bathtub or anything, and it's so big. Love this library room. This is one of the best rooms that we've seen in the world so far. It just it looks like it suits the house. It looks like it suits witches. And even though it's dark and ugly, it just really works. Oh, wow. There's a third floor. Look, there's even more bedrooms. So there's only three people who live here and they've got like all this space. Up here is another bathroom. My goodness. And another seating area. I like how they make use of the space, even if they didn't put a room here. Why do they have exercise equipment? I just cannot imagine witches working out. I I would just fly my broomstick everywhere. It said the garage is luxurious. It just has broomsticks in a car. Whatever. I'm a little bit conflicted because this is like one of the worst roofs we've ever seen. But again, it's kind of due to the shell. But they could have built the shell a little bit differently. I don't like how like the middle dormer is smaller than any other chunk of the house. I don't like the roof color. I don't like the siding. Inside is pretty good, but again, they make a few questionable choices. I think they just got lazy closer towards the end. And since we've seen them do much better mansions in this world, I'm going to give it a five. Well, I'm sorry we didn't end off as strong as we started. My goodness, I was expecting a few more tens, but what can you do? Well, that does it for Moonlight Falls. What did you guys think? I was a little disappointed because we did so well in the first episode, but even with just this second half, it's still better than any of the other worlds we've seen. I think the only other one that closely compares is Midnight Hollow, but we have lots of choices for our next one, so make sure you head to the community tab so you can vote for which one you want to see next. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for some more Sims content. And of course, I'm always doing other videos in between these build reviews, so if you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Boom.